So since the reveal of Robert Downey Jr. returning to the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Doctor Doom and the Russo brothers returning to helm Avengers 5 and 6, seems we're starting to see the ramifications of Marvel, Kevin Feige and his team retroactively admitting they were wrong and also admitting that they have had a lot of misses in the last few years with movies such as The Eternals, because Marvel is reportedly not developing a sequel for that movie. Also, Mahersha Ali's Blade that they announced in 2019. We're now, like, literally five years later, they haven't done anything with that. It's very interesting. So they're retroactively getting rid of movies that people didn't really care for. There's no official news on Shang-Chi 2, but you guys know that I think Shang-Chi sucked. Basically, any movie that didn't make any money and didn't go anywhere. So, yo, what is freaking good YouTube? What's you have you on your anime show? I've never missed any of the Marvel DC Kaiju. Much diverse pop hitcher base content. With that, I tried to cover on a daily basis. Good subscribe channel, turn notifications on, and let me know what movies are you looking forward to that they haven't revealed yet officially. We're not talking about a little Jimmy, the top scooper, saying some nonsense that never happens and then backtrack. We're talking about what actually haven't they said? They really need to make a Doctor Strange 3. And also, it seems like they're using this Fantastic Four movie to set up Doom because Doctor Doom is a Fantastic Four villain predominantly, so it makes a lot of sense. So this is coming from a trade known as Variety. Which we get it, they were wrong about Restore the Snyder Cut and there was no Snyder Cut, but trades are more reliable than Little Jimmy from Twitter. So there's an article where they essentially say that Eternals 2 is definitely not happening. But it also goes on to say why Kit Harrington, the major Game of Thrones star, took on the role. And it's kind of funny, kind of funny what he said. I'm not going to pretend I took the role because it was different. And interesting, if Marvel calls, you just do it. Marvel has been developing its own Blade reboot with Mahersh Ali for the last couple of years and has faced numerous development issues. The movie was announced back in July 2019, two years before the Eternals set up Dane Whitman, a connection to Blade, because he was going to be the Black Knight. Kind of a shame, because if, if they actually did a Midnight Suns movie, this all could have panned out to be pretty cool. But what's even more freaking interesting now is fans want the legacy character back. Fans actually want Wesley Snipes to get his own movie. And then if you go back to the Deadpool movie, Wesley Snipes' line was the one and only Blade. Now, according to CosmicBookNews.com, Ryan Reynolds asked fans for help to get one more Wesley Snipes movie. Wants to give an actor a character send-off similar to Logan. I honestly think that would do well. I honestly think fans would be down. And it's interesting because little Jimmy from Twitter and Scoopers were all saying there's massive beef between Ryan Reynolds and Wesley Snipes. And it turns out there's no beef at all. So that would be pretty cool. I mean, Ryan Reynolds even tweeted this. There is no Fox Universe or MCU without Blade first creating a market. He's Marvel's daddy. Please retweet for a Logan-like send-off. So Ryan Reynolds looks like he wants to get involved with a Blade movie and looks like he wants to work on it and maybe direct it or something. That would be freaking cool. Now, I feel sorry for Mahersh Ali, to be honest, because I think he would be pretty cool playing Blade, but we've not actually seen him. He's currently attached to said movie being the new Jurassic Park movie. But the reason why people think the Blade movie is completely off the cars and completely scrapped is because in a recent Disney earnings call, they literally revealed the slate and they had this to say. Looking at our up-and-coming theatrical slate, we are excited to bring an audience a number of titles that expand our popular franchises and bring these stories to life in imaginary new ways. Later in the year, we have the highly anticipated release of Moana 2, as well as Muswatha, The Lion King in 2025. Our theatrical slate remains just as robust to Captain America, Brave New World, Thunderbolts, Fantastic Four, First Steps, Zootopia 2, Avatar 3, and in 2026, we look forward to Avengers Doomsday, a new Star Wars movie featuring The Mandalorian, and Groku, and Toy Story 5, the first Toy Story movie since 2019. No mention of Blade. Blade was supposed to be coming out late 2025, I believe. So the fact that Marvel, Disney, Bob Iger are just pretending it's not happening, I think this movie is either going to get delayed massively now to like 2027 or get cancelled. So Marvel are actually actively changing things behind the scenes. Now, I can't find any information about Shang-Chi 2. Now, I know a lot of people are fans of Shang-Chi. I, I don't honestly understand why 
but I've been seeing information about Shang-Chi 2 happening for years and years. And of course, I mean, there's an article just here from comicbook.com. Wakafina says she hasn't heard any updates on Shang-Chi 2, yet you got Simulu, the main star, saying it's happening, it's happening. But no, we've had Comic-Con, we've had D23. I don't believe it's happening. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. There's an article here from a few days ago. Simi Lu confirmed Shang-Chi 2 is still happening. I really can't say anything beyond that because it's not happening. I mean, with the bangles, I mean, it had potential. I just thought it was a pretty generic movie, if you ask me. So, the Fantastic Four movie is pretty cool. We went over the alleged kind of plot leak for said movie, which does line up with the trailer that they made. They didn't even start shooting. They literally made that trailer just for Comic-Con, and it lined up with a lot of the plot leaks. So information has come out recently about an alleged post credit scene, which it would make sense, because I don't care what anyone says. They've got to get rid of Kang the Conqueror somehow, and they've got to start building some freaking hype up, because the Robert Downey Jr. reveal at San Diego Comic-Con, yes, it's got a lot of normies, a lot of the general audience talking about Marvel again, who necessarily wouldn't talk about it. So... There's some information come online saying the Fantastic Four, the first steps post credit scene, Kang the Conqueror variant will be killed by Doctor Doom. And then it's got the picture of Ramatur, Amortis, so on and so forth. What is also interesting is apparently there was a whole plot in it, Agatha all along, I believe it's called. I, I can't keep up with it. It, it changes in title. But apparently Amortis was supposed to be a part of said movie. So they've got to get rid of Kang at some point between now and Avengers Doomsday, or show it at the start of the movie. They don't even necessarily have to show the actor's face on said character. And also, Doctor Doom is a Fantastic Four villain, so to introduce Doctor Doom into Fantastic Four would make sense and would be pretty obvious. So, according to Daniel RPK, this was set. Robbie Downey Jr.'s Doctor Doom is reportedly from the same universe as the Fantastic Four in the Fantastic Four Steps. Now, this interesting story gets even more interesting when you read where the Fantastic Four are allegedly actually from. So we're not going to go over the whole plot leak, but we're just going to go over part of it. So the family already known as Fantastic Four in the retro futuristic universe, they're on a mission, but it's interesting where it says they come from. Their origin is shown briefly. They discover a new dimension, maybe the negative zone. Whilst trying to explore it, they were sucked into the multiverse, exposed to high levels of radiation and fell into the parallel universe and now have powers. It is revealed they chose to settle in the new society because they were unable to return to their universe, and their recognition comes after a heroic act against a mad scientist known as Mole Man. So the Fantastic Four in this movie are predominantly going to be in a timeline, period piece, where they're not actually from themselves. So wherever the Fantastic Four are from, it's allegedly saying that this version of Doom is also going to be from this universe. So Alex Perez actually gave this scooper, he's called Main Middleman, some prop. So Alex Perez from the Cosmic Circus did his Discord article thing that came up and was asked a question. Recently, the Insider M3 apparently leaked some parts about the script of the Fantastic Four. He said Galactus would not be defeated in this film. The rumor is true. Could Galactus be one of the villains alongside Doctor Doom in Avengers Doom Dame Teak Wars? Or will he be exploited after Secret Wars? Alex says this. I've only heard Galactus will be dealt with in Fantastic Four. There is some credence to the rumor of Galactus not being defeated by the heroes. However, Galactus' story, at least for the universe, will end there. Although sacrifices will be made. So there's some validity to that being true. So Doctor Doom being revealed in a post credit scene, taking out the Kangs. The Kangs no longer being a threat would actually hype people up more for Avengers Doomsday because then you wouldn't have the normies going, but but what about what about Kang that was in Loki? Because the Kangs are not defeated. The Kangs are still out there. They're dealt with for now, but they're still being monitored by said TVA. And although people's like, yeah, cool, let's drop Kang, it was boring, but you can't build up Jonathan Mays is playing a character such as Kang and all the other variations in Loki season one, Loki season two, and have the whole Ant-Man 3 thing and not ever talk about it and kind of like just squash it. It needs to be seen. So if this post credit scene is real with the Kangs being defeated in a post credit scene, that would make a lot of sense. And also it would explain a lot of things to the normies and to the people who actually, well, I guess were kind of invested somewhat in that storyline because yeah, sure. I think Dr. Doom was all, and, and as far as I understand, Dr. Doom was always going to 
appear at some point, but you can't just scrub the Kang part of it like it never happened. So I don't believe it's a, like officially verified to be true, but Robert Downey Jr. is back now. So it would make sense to get rid of the Kangs before Avengers Doomsday, or they could do it in Avengers Doomsday. But whatever's happening, Marvel is retroactively listening and kind of taking notes to what people didn't like, hence the no Eternals 2, although the Eternals movie did end with the Ishram. Judgment will come to you insane post credit scene and maybe people like shang chi i just didn't like it but like we're in a multiversal saga i get it the bangles were introduced but shang chi can still appear in other movies as we know in miss marvel the other bangles are there so we we know it's going somewhere and probably that it could have some correlation to how dr doom maybe get his powers although there are some crazy youtube videos and theories of how doom's gonna get his powers and all this kind of stuff and i came across a, a crazy video saying wanda's gonna be behind how dr doom gets his powers i can't remember who made that video but that sounds pretty wild so go check that video out uh, i can't remember what's called something to do with wanda and dr doom that sounds pretty cool whichever way dr doom gets his powers it's gonna be pretty cool well let's hope it can all tie together because that's what people live in the marvel cinematic universe so like always guys we wrapped up a bunch of stories. Let me know. Do you want to watch this like legacy movie? I think it'd be pretty cool. He's clearly still alive, like Gambit is, like X23, so on and so forth. I'll be down to see Mahershala Ali Blade do a movie, but I think he's currently busy with Jurassic, the new Jurassic Park movie. I'm pretty sure he's attached to that. And it's been five years since they announced it. No movement. So it's going to be interesting. Let's hope Marvel can keep listening to the feedback of movies underperforming. I mean, a Marvel movie doing less than $700 million is pretty weak because Marvel movies have to make so much money. The budget is so high, the marketing is so high. Most Marvel movies have to clear five, six hundred million just to break even. So a Marvel movie doing under 500 is shocking. I know what gonna people say, oh, it's post yeah, I get it, Shang-Chi 2. Yeah, it kind of was, but no, nah, people were still going to cinema. I can't I can't accept that excuse. So like these guys, check us out on Instagram at WorstG, check us out on Twitter at WorstG. Yeah, then we'll catch you in another video, guys, very soon. Catch you later.